my friend. I'm glad to see you made it. For I'm gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. Today, my friends, I wanted to tell you a little story, a little Bible story from way back in the Old Testament. You know, some of the things in the Bible are, are uh, a great teaching tool, a, a great way to learn, a, a great deal of instructions that are all full of wisdom, knowledge, and, and things that, that could help us in our walk in this world today. All we got to do is apply these words to our lives. Jesus says many times throughout his ministry that uh, unless we're willing to put these words of his to action, to apply them to our lives, to, to make them a reality, it doesn't really work. So when Peter and Philip and James and John and Paul were preaching the good news, Really, you know, what if that word good news was like functional news? Like, like we're a bunch of dysfunctional people and, and all of a sudden we got a, a new word and in that word we found function. Something that was functional. Go from a dysfunctional family to a, to a proper functional family. That's one of the things of the Bible. Is it's about family living, community living. It's, uh, and, and it doesn't have to be like you have to live in, in a commune or, or some place like that. It's just how do you conduct yourself while you're out and amidst the community or other people. And so, you know, there's a lot of false teachings and a, and a lot of things out there that are going on because the road to destruction is far and wide. And the path to eternal life is straight and, and narrow. And so we can't escape the fact that even though we love Jesus Christ with all our heart, might and soul for saving us, the individual, you know, we, we are to transfer or, or that love to other people as well. So the you know, story I'm going to talk about is a story from Solomon in, in his time. And we got these two prostitute women. And we know like a prostitute is someone who sells themselves, their talents, their gifts for an unjust cause, for an unjust reason. Right? And, and so we, we could say a, a prostitute is someone who sells their own body for sex. And that's the definition of prostitute, but it's not limited to that only. You know, we, we could sell ourselves to unjust gain, right? We, we, we could sell off, like, like Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Could sell somebody, uh, use our talents, our gifts, our life to, to, for the unjust gain of the shedding of blood of an innocent person. And we see that all the time in the world. Uh, another form of prostitution is, is I will I will devote myself to God like I will fast from food from drinks I'll fast from these things I'll starve myself in order to receive a, a miracle or some favor from God that that too is some form of prostitution we we see that there's this man named Simon and and he was a magician. And he was known throughout this time as a great magician and had many people following him. And they liked him and they loved him. And, and he was a good guy. Didn't do anything bad. But, but in that, he would perform a, a miracle for somebody for a price, for money. Now, now, now he came to know Philip and, and Peter and all them and the, and the apostles and believed in them. But, but when Peter came to, to, to administer or, or uh, give out the Holy Spirit, because they had only been simply baptized in the name of Jesus, right? They, they were baptized in water or Jesus' name. But they had not been baptized yet into the teachings and instructions of God, which produce the Holy Spirit. So, so 
They had to have the apostles and Peter went down to lay his hands on people and it was by laying the hands on those people they received the Holy Spirit. They had not yet received it. And when Simon saw Peter handing out or giving out the Holy Spirit, he, he gives Peter and offers him money and says, Hey, I want to buy the Holy Spirit. I want to buy that gift so I too can lay my hands on people and give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Peter says, take your money and, and to hell with you. Take your money and to hell with you. You don't need it. You know, and he says, your, your heart is wicked. Your heart has deceived you. To think, make you think that you could buy God. You could buy the Holy Spirit. You cannot purchase the Holy Spirit. We cannot buy it and we cannot gain it. Or, or obtain it any other way than by through the free gift that comes from the willing heart of compassion and love. So today my story is a little bit about that, is how we see uh, God really has no compassion on the dead. On the dead. And there's no compassion there from, from God for the dead. Yeah, God reigns justly righteous things on wicked people, but for, for the dead, you know, there's, there's no compassion there for it. Even some guy come to Jesus and says, I'll follow you, but first I gotta go bury my dad. And Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead, but, but you follow me. And, and so, I wanna uh, come and, and talk about something here in, in First Kings, and we'll start at uh, 1 Kings chapters 3, verse 10. And this is Solomon, as he's just uh, his first day out or, or whatever. He's been anointed as king. He's the second or the third king of uh, Israel, and he's the son of David. Right? And so we come and we see that uh, Solomon is praying out and talking. To the, to God, and Solomon says in verse ten or uh, verse six. Let's go there. Solomon answered, "You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous, and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day." Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. And so that's the thing, you know, is coming to Christian, Christianity or, or to Jesus Christ, we, we get baptized. And then it's from that moment we are baptized, we, we are like children. We must relearn everything we have learned because everything we have learned has come from the deception of, of evil, the deception of the devil, through uh, a, a place of deception. We, we see in the, in the Google world how many people come to you in the form of deception, and, and those people who have come to you in the form of deception are trying to teach you Jesus Christ. Yet, by their actions, that they deny Jesus Christ through their actions. So, so Satan, Antichrist, comes to you in the form of a beautiful angel or, or an angel or some form of righteousness. But, but in its heart, there has no compassion. In his heart, does the opposite through his actions of, of that which is of Jesus. So Jesus being the living example by which we are to live by. Satan says, I know Jesus, I know God, but, but the example of his actions are the opposite of Jesus. We come to our father as a little child, and we admit, I don't know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. 
So give your servant a discerning heart to govern our people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Right? And, and so Solomon, the Lord appears to Solomon in, in a dream and says, Ask anything you wish. Anything you wish. Right? Jesus says, Now that, that you have my name, the name of Jesus Christ, and we can ask Jesus Christ for anything we wish, and God will answer that prayer. Now Jesus says, If you ask for bread, just know God will not give you a snake. Right? If you ask for, for uh, some fish, God is not going to give you a scorpion. Right? And so that's the thing. Solomon, ask God anything you wish. And, and Solomon says, not asking for, for money. How many of us are motivated by money and prosperity. We have people, millionaire, billionaire preachers and teachers who love to, to come to you in the finest of suits. They'll spend $500,000 on a suit, you know, two, three hundred dollars on a t-shirt or, or this shirt, you know, another two, three hundred dollars for the tie, five hundred dollars on the sh shoes, come to you in, in the form of beauty. And, and not just some sort of physical beauty, but beauty made through the production of men's hands. Of men's hands. They create a, an idol, create a, an image. Some image that's going to come to you in, in, in a form that's deceptive because we know that they themselves are selling themselves, and that's why there's good salesmen where the fancy suits, because they're selling themselves for an unrighteous or unworthy cause. Cause. Right? And they'll tell you, oh, the reason God isn't blessing you is because you need to do this, this, and this. Or you need to do that, that, and that. Right? You need to fast. You need to pay your tithes. If you start paying your tithes, God will reward you. Because, by the way, how does the gospel of Jesus Christ going to be continually preached unless you pay for God to be here? And, and right there with Simon and Peter. It's false teachings. I, I am an eyewitness, living example of, of working for the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ free of charge for the past four years. I, I am living witness, a living evidence that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be taught whether you pay your tithes or not because you cannot buy God. And God is not dependent on your money. He's not dependent on our money. We in this world feel as though we are dependent on money. We're not dependent on God, but dependent on money. And money is the root of all evil. Let me see. It goes on to say, For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies. How many of us are asking for the death of our enemies? Boy, you know, like, like we see in this world that we have Christians, we have Jews, and we have Muslims, and not all of them claim to be the children of Abraham, yet none of them can get along. Right? Right? They, they can't love each other as one family. The Jews are, swear to God, that, that they are the only people of God's children, yet I, I am proudly an Israelite, belonging and a citizen of the Israel nation, yet they would never allow me to, to uh, be a part of this physical nation of Israel here on earth because I'm not a Jew. Only the Jews 
our nation of Israel, right? And, and that's a lie. That's a lie. You know, we see in the Muslim world. Same fight, same argument, different place, different thing. You know? Goes on to say. Didn't ask for long life for yourself. Didn't ask wealth for yourself. How many people are preaching and teaching you how to get long life? Preaching to you how to receive great wealth. Right? Goes on to say, you did not ask for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. Now you will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover. I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes and commands, as David your father did, I will give you long life. Then Solomon awoke and realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and sacrificed burnt offerings of fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. So he went and had a big barbecue and so when we say he sacrificed stuff, he sacrificed from his own purse, from his own wealth, animals and, and food and, and all the things that would take to have this great big huge barbecue. And they all feasted and had a great time, right? Sometimes we're always so concerned about God wanting to bless us, and yet Solomon's saying, you know, instead of blessing me, give me wisdom, discernment. And through seeking the kingdom first, then all those things were added to him, the things he never asked for. Right? And with that, he, through the charity of his heart, the charity of his heart, the compassion of his heart, the goodness of who he was, gave to the entire community a great meal. A great meal. Now, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, My Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. And there was no one in the house but us two. Right? During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. Have right? you ever loved your child so much and, and had your baby and sleeping there in the bed and, and you roll over and laid on the baby and, and smothered it to death, right? Kills the baby. And in the middle of the night she goes and, and trades the dead baby for the live baby. And every mother on earth knows their own child. They know their baby. They know who their child is. They know every crease on their body. They, they know their eyes. They know their hair. They, they know their smell. They, they know everything about their child. About their child. One child is dead and, and the other child is alive. These two prostitute women. And, and you know women, whether they're uh, prostitutes or, or, or regular women or who they are, your child dies great grief. Deep bitterness comes and sets in. So we see that here it's like a story of wormwood. Wormwood is a deep, deep bitterness and wormwood will come and bite or affect the waters, turning the water to poison, which creates bitterness. Deep bitterness for one-third of the earth, one-third 
of the world. Maybe one third of God's children. All the descendants of Abraham. One third of them are going to experience and be a part of wormwood. That deep bitterness. You know, and that's the thing is uh, one child dead and one's alive. We see with, with, you know, the Muslims. They say Muhammad lied, never died. We say Jesus died, yet Jesus is the Savior in the cross, the Muslim Christ. And the Muslims say he's not the Christ. It's just a man, and in him there's no atonement for sin or anything like that. He was not divine or God or begotten of God. And so they were saying he's just dead. He died. But our guy, he's alive. He lives. And they're all fighting and arguing over who's the promise for? Who's this love and grace for? Is it for those who are bound to a law? As we see, you know, Paul says, the, the slave woman, Hagar's descendants, and we got the, the Muslims who are descendants of Ishmael have no inheritance, no peace, no share in, in that of those of the children of Isaac, children of the promise. Although the promise was made to Abraham before any was born. Before any of them was born, but the promise was made through Sarah. Through Sarah. You know, the, the works of men's hands cannot produce God's promise. Only God himself goes on to say. During that night, this woman's son died and she laid on him. So she got up in the middle of the night, took my son from my side while I, her servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her head and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But I looked at him closely in the morning light, and I saw that this was not my son I had born. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son, and the dead one is yours. Right? But the first one insisted, No! The dead one is yours, and the living is mine. And so they argued before the king. And so, you know, I just imagined, you know, these people, and we see today, you know, and all the things, and how, like, when we watch Bible movies, they've been distorted in a way because I don't think, I think they remove flesh and blood. They, they remove reality, and it just becomes a story. I bet these two women were screaming and hollering at each other, vexed to the very soul so much that they're there with the king and the king's all getting there and he's got all the stuff and they're listening to these women screaming and hollering at one another not just having some uh kosher conversation but 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 uh, but great depths of bitterness th throughout all of it deep bitterness King said, this one says, my son is alive and your son is dead. Well, that one says, no, your son is dead and mine is alive. And then the king said, bring me a sword. Now he says, bring me a sword, right? Bring the child right here and I'm going to cut the child in two and cut it in half. We'll give half to you and half to you, right? But I don't think it was so kosher and everything like you're sitting back. I bet they brought in and the kid, hey, give me that sword, right? And these two women are arguing back and forth, arguing back and forth. They don't pay attention to anything or anything that's going on. And all of a sudden, here's the, the king with, with the sword, and, and they got the child, and, and they're sitting there. And, and while the two women are arguing, he says, now listen. I'm going to cut this little bastard in half, right? And he goes to cut her in half. And the woman, one woman, with finds compassion in her heart. Remember Jesus said the prostitutes, the drunkards, the tax collectors, 
they heard the, the message John was preaching and they repented. They, they had a change of heart. They had a change of, of mind. And here we see this woman, and she has a change of heart, has a change of mind. And she says, no, give the boy to the other woman, right? Because when, when, when those who show mercy, they will receive mercy. And Jesus says the same thing. If you go out and live your life in a way that you show mercy, God will show you mercy. Right? And we're talking about mercy in life-threatening situations. And she stands up for righteousness. She stands up for, for justice and says, No, I'd rather see the child live. And then be destroyed. While the other woman says, neither one of us will have it. Fine. Neither one of us will have the baby. Cut him in half. No compassion. No mercy. Now, Jesus Christ says, I, I promise this. I, one day I will give you the comforter. The Holy Spirit. And with the comforter comes the spirit of truth. And I will give you these two gifts. The gift of truth and the gift of this comfort and the comfort is knowing that you can make a righteous decision in the midst of truth truth that there's all truth cannot exist unless there's error so so scientifically we say this is science we, we do something over and over and over and if there's an error there we recalculate it and we try to remove the error until there's absolute truth. No error can exist and then we say that is the truth. That is called a fact. Right? And, and so he, he's through the Holy Spirit and, and we say Jesus baptizes in fire. And fire burns off the dross. Making gold pure. Here. So so here comes and he delivers the fire. What's the fire? The sword, right? So we got Jews and Christians who, who believe they're two separate families, two separate people. Uh, we have the Jews believe they are the God's gift to the earth and they are the Israelite nation. Yet the Christians, are, as according to the Jews, are rejected from that nation. And, and all the Christians reject the Jews from being a part of their nation, yet they don't understand that both nations are one nation, right? Governed by God. Governed by Jesus Christ, who is king. <coughs> God brings a sword, right? The Muslims. <laughs> and they'll cut your head off. If you don't believe in God, and even if you do believe in God, it's even more of the better reason to, to cut you down, to kill and destroy you. And, and the reason they want to kill and destroy Christians and Jews, this is the number one reason that motivates a Muslim to, to go out and destroy Christians and Jews. Because Christians and Jews will not call them brother. Won't do it. Won't accept them into their family. Well, if you won't accept this in, then we will kill you. If we're not a part of that family, then, then you're not a part of our family. And Jesus says to all of us, if you can't, if you only, if you only love those who love you, what good are you? You, you are exactly the same as all these other people. But, but he wants you to be perfect as God is perfect, for God loves all of them. All of them. So the woman finds compassion in her heart. She says, no. I'd rather see the child live outside of my control, outside of my love, and outside of my comfort. 
but I want to see the child live. The other woman didn't care whether the child lived or not. Had only one desire, and that was to, to have her own baby, to, to have her own bitterness removed from her by the works of her own hands. It was the works of her own hands that, that rolled over and laid on the baby and smothered it to death. And it was by the works of her own hands she felt like she could bring that dead child back to life by stealing someone else's live baby. Right? But it was the one who showed compassion. Solomon the king says, this is the woman. Stop, don't kill the child. This is the woman whom the child belongs to. Let both that woman and her child live together. Go your way. Because she showed mercy, because she showed compassion, right? The king showed her mercy. The king showed her compassion. No, it got prostitutes. They, they were prostitutes. The, the one turned. The one gave up her will for the will of God. If it was the will of God for, for this woman to steal my child and take it away from me, then so be it. So long as in God's will, this child has life. It shows compassion. We see today in the United States of America a lack of compassion. A lack of compassion. We see it for a lack of compassion not just for Christians, Muslims, and Jews, but a lack of compassion for all human life. All human beings. For in America, they're, they're a country and a, and a nation who love the image. They love a $500 suit more than they love their neighbors. They love a $500 pair of shoes more than they love their aunts and their uncles, their own family. They will try and make you convinced and believe that if you don't give them money, that, that God is all of a sudden going to vanish from the earth. Right? But all the while they're seeking to buy another suit, another tie, more clothing, to improve the, this outer image. But one thing when they all together deny the truth. And this is how they all together deny the truth. By their lack of care for one another. The evidence is there that their guilt is there that they are the great prostitutor. They are the great prostitute, living in prostitution. For they all claim that they love Jesus, yet all of them, by their actions, do the opposite of what Jesus teaches us. They have no mercy on each other. You know, the, the evidence is health insurance. Selling yourself, your talents, and your gifts to an unjust cause makes you a prostitute. When you make your, your life, your career, and your social status all based in your identity, based upon the suffering of another person, you are a prostitute. Now, one of these prostitute women repented and turned from her ways, turned to show mercy and, and compassion, while the other stayed in bitterness. Peter says to Simon, Take your money and go to hell. You can't buy God. I see in you, and I see the truth. And he says, Sir, you're full of bitterness. You're full of wickedness, and you thought you could trick God? You thought you could come to God and you could lie to God? What in earth has created this wickedness in your heart to believe in such a great deception? Be gone for me, you evildoer. 
he will do it. How many of us student church are trying to buy and purchase God's grace, God's mercy, God's healing? Yet, yet in that, some people and many people, and we know your mom and dad, my mom and dad, our aunts and uncles, people we know at work, have paid into insurance things for 20, 30 years of their life, yet today cannot go to the doctor. You know, even, even my own mother, pray for her. Pray for us. Pray for our family. Spends four days in, in the hospital and five days at, at 20 grand a night. And, and we don't have insurance. We don't have health care. Just can't afford it. But because the, the want for greed is greater than, than the want to show compassion and mercy. Spend four days in the hospital and need a little operation or whatever to have a, a stone removed from pancreas, and they won't do the operation. Charge you forty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars for staying in their room for four or five days, and yet will not perform the operation because you don't have insurance. If we do the operation, it's going to be two, three hundred thousand dollars, and we are going to get paid. We'll take everything you got. They base their lives upon a, an unjust system, a system where there is no righteousness, there is no compassion, and mercy has been removed. Yet, yet. We as Christians, what, what, how does it, as we as Christians and Christian people raise children, say, children, go to a university, a hospital, wherever, university, college, and, and become a, a doctor, right? And we raise our children as Christians and, and to be a part of the kingdom, kingdom of Jesus Christ. Yet, yet we sell our children as though they were prostitutes, sell our gifts and our talents, and ourselves to a system of unjust gain, to a system of unworthy cause. Why do we not raise our children to, to be doctors and nurses for Christ's kingdom? Where, where, where mercy and grace cannot be bought. Where compassion cannot be bought. Paul says. The Bible says. Solomon says. Jesus says. If you have no love, you're bankrupt. Bankrupt. You cannot buy God. You will not accept money. Sacrifices, love. Without love, you're bankrupt. America is bankrupt. There are trillions of dollars in the hole. Bank robbed. In the hearts and minds of the American Christian, it's bankrupt. They do not have love for one another. You do not have compassion for each other. Selling yourselves. Unworthy causes. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to memorialize and remember the, the people who died for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That, that those people who died for that are the people who made a way for a hospital to be on earth, but it's the wicked people who prevent sick people from coming to that hospital, from coming to that place of healing. Bankrupt without love. Hmm. So I ask the question again. What kind of a kingdom 
would you like to be a part of? Because in Christ's kingdom, it's about charity. Charity. What is the opposite of a prostitute? Charity. I give myself away freely. Freely. For a just cause. I give myself away freely. For a just cause. Be a part of God's kingdom. And he will bless you. But I think you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit in order to receive the Holy Spirit. Think about it. See you next time. Uh -huh.